Girl About Library, and I'm here with my September TBR. I get all set up to record a video, and a storm moves in, so it's a little cloudy, just a little bit, and I got a lot of overhead artificial lights, but we'll see how it goes. So long story short, that is why it's super dark in here, and there might be something more than coffee in my cup. My TBR list this month is a little overly ambitious, but I have some tricks that I think are going to make this doable. It's so hard to know at the beginning of the month like what your reading month is going to be like. I, do, I think it's going to be a good month for reading. I don't know. I thought last month was going to be a good month for reading, and I got six books read, which that's, that's not bad, but it's not like... It's not as good as it could have been. And so I'm hoping that I'm setting myself up for success this month. I have seven books on my TBR list this month, which isn't an insane amount. It's, it's, it's a good amount for me, but they are lo they're longer books. Like it's a, it's a hefty stack here. So granted, it's only seven books, but they're, I mean, they're a good size. First up on my TBR is Salt to the Sea by... Ruda, I feel like I've heard people pronounce her name differently than I'm about to pronounce it. I, looking at it, I'm saying Ruda Sepetis, Sepetis, Sepetis? I'm gonna have to Google that. But I am almost halfway into this book and I'm really enjoying it. I love World War II historical fiction, which is what this is. And I love too that this book is not from a perspective that I typically read in World War II historical fiction. Um, there's four different teenagers' perspectives that it's coming from. There's one who's German, one who's Polish, um, Lithuanian, I mean, a wide range. Um, and traditionally, those aren't commonly represented, and so that's really neat. I've just found this book really easy to read so far. I think it helps that it's YA, but also the perspective is constantly changing, which at first I was a little worried about, but it just, it keeps the story moving in such a nice way that I'm, I'm flying through this one and I'm, I'm really liking it. Next up is The Lies of La Clamora. This is recommended by Kristen's Library. She read it, um, I want to say two months ago, and she really enjoyed it. Um, the thing that she said about it that really grabbed my attention is I think she described it as kind of like a light, lighter fantasy. Not super heavy, but still fantasy. I don't know that much about the book otherwise, so I'm excited to start this one. I don't read fantasy very often. I have a hard time suspending disbelief for that, but I'm always looking for fantasy that I can suspend disbelief for, that I will enjoy, so I'm rooting for you. Lies of Lakamora. I'm hoping I really enjoy this. After that, I have Rainbow Rowell's Landline, which these are not in order of the way that I'm going to read them because I'm actually almost done with this one. I just love Rainbow Rowell so much. Like every time I read one of her books, I want to read all of her books and I'm on my way there. But I have just so enjoyed this book. It's so cute and so good and technically this is fantasy and I'm enjoying it. The premise of this book is that Georgie McCool is a screenwriter in California. Her husband though is from Nebraska and Georgie is supposed to go with her husband and her two daughters to Nebraska for Christmas but because they have this big opportunity that has come up as far as screenwriting she decides to stay home and her husband decides to take the two girls to Nebraska. While she stays at home kind of having like this emotional crisis because her family is gone and her mom is convinced that her marriage is over and she probably has good reason to be worried. Georgie goes to her mom's house one night and calls her husband and realizes during the phone call that she's actually talking to her husband from 15 years ago. And so she has this opportunity uh, to kind of sneak into the past and try to figure out where some of their problems started and if there's anything that she can really do at this point to resolve it. And I have just loved this book so far. It's so real. I mean, she just does such a great job of presenting the frustrations and beauty and just those intricacies of, of being in relationships, particularly particularly being married and being married to someone for a, a long time. I don't want it to be over and I'm so sad that there's not that much left, and I'm, but I'm also so glad that there are at least two or three other books that she's written that 
I haven't read yet, so I'll be able to read more Rainbow Rowell when this is done, but I'm going to miss Georgie. Next, I have a book that I have been in the progress of reading for a while, and I don't, it just keeps getting pushed to the back. I'm sure everyone has books like that, and this is mine. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am really enjoying this book, and I don't know why it's taking me so long to read it. I'm only halfway through, and I started it in... July? Early July. Maybe even June. And it, it's a book that I'm excited about. I'm really enjoying it so far. It just... Sorry, book. You got pushed to the back. This book explores the life of Evelyn Hugo. Uh, she is a famous actress who, years and years after being famous, has decided that she wants to kind of tell her life story, um, which she's never fully told before. And she decides to tell it to a lesser known journalist, and so this is like the journalist's big break. But it's definitely more complicated than that. Her reasons for picking the journalist and her reasons for now deciding to finally tell her life story, um, there's definitely a lot there. And also, her life story isn't what people would expect it to be. And so far, the book has gone through a couple of the different husbands that she's had, and I have really enjoyed it. I don't know why this book kind of got push to the back. Maybe once I finish it, I'll, I'll have a better understanding of why it hasn't been a priority for me, but I'm hoping that I finish this one this month. I have to finish this one this month. It's been, I've been reading it for too long. So next up, I have three audiobooks and I also have the books for those audiobooks. So this is the way that I'm hoping I'm able to get through a couple of books this month that I have been slogging through. I wasn't able to find an audiobook for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo at my library, probably just because it's, it's relatively new, but I did find three audiobooks for books that I want to get through. Um, Fates and Furies, Dark Matter, and Running with Scissors. Fates and Furies is one that I picked up from Book of the Month Club, and I was really excited about it because I heard really good things about it. It was a National Book Award finalist, and I was just like super pumped to read this book. So I picked up a digital copy from my library while I was traveling and out of town, and I started it, and I was so disappointed. I'm sure that that happens all the time, but it doesn't happen that often to me, and I just, oh, like I couldn't believe that what I was reading was what everyone had been talking about because it was not good to me. I do still want to get through it. Um, so far, the book for me has been one of those books where the writing is so flowery and like that you don't even really know what's happening. Um, I don't, I can't think of a better way to describe it than that. Like I genuinely just like don't know what's happening. I just, there's just lots of words and lots of descriptions and like looking at the inside flap and looking at the plot was not my experience of the first like 20 pages. So I don't know. I think I just need to give it a try again and hopefully having the book and the audiobook will, will help me with that. Next up is Dark Matter, which is also a book of the month book club that I picked. Um, and I have the audiobook here as well. There isn't any reason that I feel like I'm going to have a hard time reading this book. I just had the audiobook available and so I thought I'd pick it up and kind of get through it a little bit faster. This was a huge book, I think, last summer, and I just I didn't get a chance to read it then, so I'm excited to read it now. And I think this is fantasy too, so it's going to be a fantasy-y month. I don't know that much about this book. I, I think what happens, and I could be totally wrong about this, but a man is knocked unconscious or, like, somehow loses consciousness, and when he wakes up, the life that he wakes up to isn't anything like the life that he had before he lost consciousness and but it's very real and it, it's the life that he is now leading and he's not sure whether the life that he had before was the real one or the one that he's in now is the real one and so it sounds really good I've heard I've heard lots of good things about it people seem to really enjoy this book and Hopefully I do too. The next book on my TBR list is actually one I've had on my TBR shelf behind me for a while, and I want to get better about reading those books. I love checking books out from the library, like that's my, obviously, that's my go-to. But what ends up happening is that I still acquire books like any bookish person, and 
Then I have what I don't want and why I go to the library, which is a bunch of books on my shelf that I haven't read. So I kind of need to treat my TBR shelf behind me like my library for a couple of months, which is going to be hard. I know people have trouble going on like book buying bans. My book buying ban that I like have to put on myself is not going to the library, but focusing on the books that I already own. So. Here we go with that. Um, I'm really excited about this book because I love this author. Augustine Burroughs cracks me up. This guy is so great. He's just, he's so funny. I think that this book is the basis for a movie. Let me check. It was, it was, it was the movie, um, which I haven't seen. And so I get all of the things. I get to read a really funny book. I get to listen to Augustine Burroughs like read it to me, which if you want to start reading nonfiction more, this is the way to do it. Like find someone who you enjoy or you think is funny, see if they've written a memoir, probably have, and get the audiobook for it because then you get to listen to that person's hilarious voice tell you the book. And that's my favorite way to listen to memoirs. I love when an author, and usually that's how they do it. Like. It would be weird to have someone else read your memoir. So I guess Burroughs has just kind of lived this slightly bizarre life. It's bizarre, but it's also kind of sad. Um, his mom just gave him away in sorts when he was older. Um, and this is a story about how he ended up living with who he ended up living with, which was kind of it was like a psychiatrist, um, a psychotherapist. He's super bizarre, and his family's super bizarre, and his patients are even weirder. There's no rules when he grew up. There were, there was no, there was no school. Like, it was lawless. <laughs> it says that it is at turns foul and herring, compelling and maniacally funny, but above it all, it chronicles an ordinary boy's survival under the most extraordinary circumstances. Um, and book page says that there is a laughing through your tears candor that's as appealing as the situations are appalling. I read books by him before and absolutely loved them. I just, I think he's so funny. It'll be neat to kind of get some insight into how he came to, to be who he is. So this is it. This is my, this is my TBR and <laughs> wish me luck you guys. I can do it. I'm gonna do it. I think I can do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try. Please comment below, let me know what you are reading this month. Do you have a slightly overly ambitious TBR? And when you do, and you've set yourself up for that, how do you try to adjust your life or like make sure that you're able to achieve those goals? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more bookish content. Thanks for watching, bye.